What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out WWE has entered a new era. Old fans are returning by none other than WrestleMania, man. It, this is a, a crazy time we live in where we can finally say there's actual change happening within WWE. And we're living through that, that actual change. You can see it on Monday Night Raw. It may not be major changes, but they're subtle and they're noticeable. Just with what we saw on this previous Monday Night Raw with the subtle storytelling that was happening in the background. Like that is very unique in a sense where you don't really see that much. Usually Monday Night Raw has a whole bunch of cringe segments. This Monday Night Raw, I didn't feel that. I was really intrigued on what's going on with Dexter Loomis. What's what was what was the reason why the car was crashed? Why why did he crash the car? Like stuff like that. That's that's engaging me personally, and it has me excited to see what they do next week. And maybe fans are returning back. We're gonna check this video out. Appreciate all love and support, man. Let's see what WrestleMania has to say on this topic. The new era has officially landed in WWE. Yes, it has. Vince McMahon has finally retired and will have nothing to do with the day-to-day -day operations of the world's biggest wrestling promotion. But due to McMahon being gone, fans are expecting some major changes to be implemented on screen, and these changes will hopefully come sooner rather than later. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 huge changes that are coming or have already been implemented to WWE now that Vince McMahon has retired. Be sure to subscribe and hit that oh. notification. Sorry about that, my phone was going off. Number 10, less scripted promos. Oh, this is one a good one. This is a good one. The criticism of WWE is that the promos delivered by superstars feel forced and unnatural. WWE heavily scripts their promos and only lets a select few superstars deviate away from the scripted material. Mm -hmm. This limits creativity and one of the main reasons for WWE micromanaging promo content is so that talents don't go off on a tangent and potentially infringe on PG guidelines. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, there have been reports that the new head of WWE creative Triple H is going to allow talent to be more natural with their promos. Yes, Triple that's H so is good. in favor of abandoning the fully that's scripted good. promo and in favor of either improvised promos or bullet points led scripting there we this go this is welcome news and hopefully wwe fully commits to this idea and you can start to tell more wrestlers are sounding more i guess you could say real like real people they don't come off as scripted you can tell that there's a lot of improvisation going on in just the, the few promos we have been seeing and i love it that's great that's how it should always have been that's how it should give people bullet points Make sure they know what they can and case can't say on television. Give them bullet points. Let them go out there and let them entertain. No one knows a wrestler's character better than the wrestler themselves, man. Number nine, intergender wrestling. Over mm. the past decade, there's been a vast increase in the popularity of intergender wrestling. Whilst popular on the independent yeah, scene, WWE has distanced themselves from the concept and they've even stated in several interviews that they have no desire to introduce male versus female matches onto their programming. If Triple H wants to make a strong impression, introducing intergender wrestling into WWE programming would be an interesting move. However, this would only be possible if WWE abandoned their PG presentation. Yeah. Intergender wrestling in a PG environment would be hard and would likely receive complaints. Yeah. However, under a TV-14 rating, this would be more achievable. When WWE have explored this concept in the past, for instance, when Baron Corbin yeah, performed the end of days with Becky Lynch, it received move. an enormous reaction. However, it was worth noting that Corbin did receive death threats. Mm -hmm. WWE would have to be careful with how they introduced intergender wrestling, but there is certainly a demand for it, and now this could be the best time for WWE to pull the trigger. I mean, they could do that. I don't think, I don't know. It, it's a possibility. I think it should be storyline driven. It should be storyline driven. Like it shouldn't be, you know, guys just out there beating up on women for championships or nothing like that. I think it should be storyline driven where it makes sense, like within the storyline that they're trying to tell. For example, you got Rhea Ripley been dominating Dominic. And I know some of you sickos love that shit and wish it was you. Um, but say 
Dominic, you know what I'm saying, gets his get back. And I'm not talking about sending her to the gulag or anything. But, like, he's able to, you know what I'm saying, he's able to maybe, you know, get, get a one-up on her. You know, maybe maybe he ends up pushing her and she falls through a table or something like that. Like, something of that sort. Where it's not too extreme, but it makes sense within the storyline. Because, let's face it, Dominic <laughs> been getting the beats from Rhea Ripley. So, I don't know. Maybe they could do that and incorporate that. But I don't think they need to have whole matches of men versus women. That's just my personal opinion. Number eight, returning stars. I mean, exciting oh, we've concept been seeing since this. Triple H has taken over is the idea that some superstars could be returning to WWE. This. Over the past two years, WWE have released so many talents and most of them were instrumental in the success of Triple H's NXT. It would only be logical for Triple H to look to re-sign some of these talents as he knows just how good they are. This was seen in late July when Triple H decided to bring back Dakota Kai. Kai had previously left the company on her own terms and had no interest in re-signing a WWE mm -hmm. contract. However, with Triple H at the helm, Kai was more willing than ever to come back into the mix. The same could be likely said about other talent that have parted ways with WWE. Talents being rumored for a return yeah, include Bray Wyatt, Johnny Bray Gargano, Wyatt. Candice LeRae, and even Karrion Cross. Number 7, yep. Pushing... Well, you know, Cross is back and... I'm interested to see what he does on SmackDown, what they're going to have for him. Uh, I do see potentially Candice LeRae. I do see Johnny Gargano coming back. I actually now, I actually do see Bray Wyatt coming back. I didn't see it before as long as Vince was in control. But now that Vince is out of there, I can see Bray coming back. I can see that being very good in the sense of I think he will actually have the true creative control that he, he truly needs. For his characters to work. And I think it would be fantastic. That's just my my optimism here. It's it's cool to be optimistic about things that you like. You know, I know people love to be negative. Negative neg Negativity gets views. It gets people talking. But it's also cool to be positive about stuff. And I am very positive as of late with what's going on with WWE. Being smaller talent. It's common knowledge that Vince McMahon was never the biggest fan of smaller wrestlers. Oh, no, he McMahon definitely was McMahon always had wasn't. the belief that WWE superstars should be larger than life, and this narrow-minded mindset often resulted in certain superstars never getting their big break. During Triple H's era of NXT, anyone could be pushed, no matter their size. All that mattered was that they were a compelling character and were able to get over with the crowd. This mm -hmm. meant that talents such as Chad Gable and Ricochet may find themselves pushed on television, and the days of only pushing larger talents are thankfully over, and it's time for a new era where anyone can become a main eventer. Ricochet winning an opening match on SmackDown last week. She'll let you know. Ricochet winning an opening match on SmackDown. SmackDown. Against Baron Corbin. That's progress. That's 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 a step in the right direction. Hopefully they continue to do that with more people as well. Number six, elevation of mid-card titles. Yes. A rather yes. frustratingly, Vince McMahon over the past decade has clearly forgotten the importance of mid-card titles. Yep. Both the US and Intercontinental title haven't been given the respect they deserve. Unfortunately, the Intercontinental title never seems to be defended on pay-per-views anymore. No. Nope. The once prestigious title that has seemingly become more of a television title. Yep. This was a title which used to represent that the holder was one step away from the main event scene. Yeah. The person holding that title was next in line to be the top star in the company. It was also nicknamed the work rate title. Yep. Talents such as Shawn Michaels, Mr. Perfect, and Razor Ramon were given the title as WWE knew they would have amazing matches which would elevate the prestige of the title. Without a doubt, Triple H is going to put a ton of effort into making these titles mean something again. Mm, I can't this was wait. seen during his first episode of Raw as head of WWE Creative. A strong portion of the show was built around naming a yeah, new number did one it contender with the for the US title. This is exactly how the mid-card titles are elevated, and hopefully Triple H puts the same focus on the IC title. Yeah, bro. He did it with the United States Championship. That United States Championship match between Bobby Lashley and Tommaso Ciampa was chef's kiss fantastic enjoyed it i hope he uh he's doing it with the intercontinental championship i believe there's an intercontinental championship match this friday night on smackdown which i will be streaming so be on the lookout for that um i'm probably gonna post this uh i'm filming this on thursday night so most likely you'll probably see this friday morning uh afternoon -ish. so yeah man bruh 
I, I'm, the mid-card title scene has been so dead for so long. If they can bring some prestige to that, some importance to that, that is going to really help the overall roster. Because now it's going to be worth someone trying to fight for a mid-card's title. Because really the only titles that have, have been built was the Universal Championship and the WWE Championship. Those were the only titles worth fighting for. Because the rest of the mid-card titles just didn't, like Vince just didn't really care about them. Or they weren't booked to be important. But now they can be booked to be just as important as the head titles. Like people are going to want to try to win these championships. Number five, tag team wrestling focus. A former chairman, Vince McMahon, has never been a fan of tag team wrestling. Mm. McMahon has never valued it as a concept and believed that it never drew money. Current AEW tag team FTR, also known as The Revival in WWE, would mm -hmm. claim that they departed WWE as McMahon didn't respect tag team wrestling. They wanted no part of this organization. When Triple H was running NXT, there was always a focus on tag team wrestling and he made yep. sure the titles remained prominent and more importantly relevant. The game would introduce the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic, which focused on tag team wrestling whilst paying tribute to an all-time great. Mm -hmm. The main roster tag division has the opportunity they to do. be legendary. With insanely talented teams such as the Usos, the Street Profits and the New Day, the talent is there. Triple H just needs to implement compelling angles and storylines. Number four, this is no true. PG era. Now, there have been rumors circulating that WWE could be looking to leave behind the PG era. These rumors state that WWE and the USA Network have agreed to make WWE Raw a TV-14 product, while SmackDown will remain a PG presentation. Now, rumors of this change have died down recently, mm -hmm. but Triple H could finally be the one to push the change through. Triple H became a star in the Attitude Era, a TV-14 era where the limits of what WWE could deliver weren't confined by PG regulations. Triple H could be a big supporter of this change, and with Triple H as head of creative and his wife Stephanie McMahon being the CEO of WWE, this monumental change could become a reality. One of the things that a TV-14 product would allow is bloodshed blood during matches. Under PG guidelines, WWE aren't allowed to show blood, and if they do, they usually receive a ton of backlash from certain fans and sponsors. If they revert to the TV-14 era, blood can once again be used in major matches, which would certainly help push certain gimmick matches, such as Hell in a Cell and Last Man Standing matches, to the next level. Now yes, I'm all for that. I'm all for that. Not gratuitous amount of blood, but color when it needs to be color. Color when it makes sense. Hell in a Cell should be color. Last Man Standing definitely should be color. Uh, these gimmick matches that call for it should be a little bit of color. You know what I'm saying? If I'm getting hit with foreign objects, I'm probably going to bleed. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's only if it makes sense, if they're able to do it. Granted, they don't need it, but I do think it would be a nice little, nice little flavor to add to the overall product. But they don't need it. I've always said, even when the rumors came out, it's all about the booking, the booking and the setting of the show and the, and who you're pushing and, and the storylines. Those will get over more than just the actual rating you know what i'm saying those matter more than the actual rating number three raw going back to two hours back in 2015 triple h appeared on stone cold steve austin's podcast on the wwe network one of the things triple h revealed was that if he could change anything about wwe he would make raw a two-hour product yep three it, hours it of raw on a weekly basis has become excessive for the past decade and it's simply too much to handle WWE going back to the two-hour format would be a welcome change mm, and may see some lapsed great. fans return to the product. The issue is that WWE has a set contract with the USA yep, Network to can't do three it. hours of TV every week. If they go back to two hours, they would lose a significant amount of money. Mm -hmm. The question is, will WWE sacrifice this additional money in favor of a better product? Well, time will tell. Yeah, I, I don't see them going to a, to a, a, a two-hour show anytime soon. Maybe if their contract with USA is about to expire and they renegotiate, but USA is going to want that three hours. Now, here's the thing. They can put on a mostly good to decent three-hour show consistently. It will help. But overall, we all know the three-hour shows are just way too long weekly. Two hours is much. You can stomach it more. You can. It's more concise. But uh, we'll see if it does happen in the future. I don't think it will, obviously, because the USA Network, they want that. They want the money. That third hour gives them that extra bit of cash, so they want it. So Number two, improved commentary. Mm. Vince McMahon had a habit of micromanaging his commentary team. 
McMahon was notorious for constantly being in the ear of Michael Cole and sometimes even yelling at him when he said the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. McMahon has also had a set list of words that the WWE commentary team weren't permitted to say and they included words such as title and hospital. In the short term that Triple Which H has so been in crazy. charge of WWE creative, we've seen that this micromanagement style has gone completely out of the window. During this year's SummerSlam pay-per-view, Michael Cole received widespread praise yes, for his commentary did. as Cole was passionate, humorous, and even took subtle digs at his former boss. Yep. And number one. Yep, 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 man. I, I like that the fact that they're able to just let these let these announcers do their job. Don't don't micromanage them. Let them talk. Let them be them. Get the match over. Tell the story of what's happening in the ring. Like the fact that you couldn't even say hospital. You had to say medical facility. It's just wild. Bro, no. He got beat up and got sent to the hospital. The end. Like, that's, that's micromanaging to the T. Creating new stars. And yep, but from this a business is the number one thing. WWE has vastly changed how they market themselves over the past few years. Since John Cena stepped away from WWE, they've shown reluctance of marketing shows based upon one superstar instead of opting to market and promote the entire WWE brand. Whilst fans could argue that Roman Reigns is the face of the company, that is certainly correct. Mm -hmm. WWE pride themselves on saying that the fans are paying to see the WWE as a whole, not just one superstar. This falls in line with the WWE's prior reluctance to make new stars. Under Vince McMahon's regime, when the certain stars get organically over, McMahon would just cancel their push and yep. he would do anything in his power to stop that superstar potentially becoming bigger than the WWE product. Facts. This mentality needs to go away with immediate effect. Triple H needs to make new stars and it doesn't matter who they are. If a talent gets over with the audience and their performance in the ring is of the quality fans expect, mm -hmm. then there's no reason why the WWE shouldn't fully invest in that specific superstar. But there you have it, folks. Yes, that's, that's going to be the real test right there. Him creating new stars and I think he will be able to do it effectively. That's what it all comes down to. Creating new stars. Roman's not going to be there forever. He's not. He's not going to be there forever. Brock, I mean, hell, he's not even there now. You know what I'm saying? May, that may have been his last match that we saw <laughs> uh, in WWE. That last man standing match. You know? So, it's it's one of those things. John Cena is not going to be able to come back every now and then. You feel me? Like, some uh, majority of our greats are retired, and they're, they're not wrestling no more. They're gone from wrestling. So, you have to create these new stars in order to really carry on the company in the future. You know what I'm saying? At some point, Seth, he's going to be gone. When he retires, he's not going to be able to wrestle forever. Same thing with Edge. Like, the greats that we love and we appreciate now, they're not going to always be there. So you got to have the Austin theories. You got to have the, uh, the um, maybe Tommaso Ciampa's or the Johnny Gargano's or the Karrion Cross's. Even though they've been wrestling for many, many years, they're not really no young talent but it's not about the age at that point it's when that person become when that person gets over with the crowd when that person reaches his his pinnacle and it's like okay this is the guy now this is the guy that's gonna hold it down you know what i'm saying I, vince was always big on the age and you have to be young for it to work and i get it sometimes you want to have that younger face that younger talent you know to be the the next man up or next woman up but at the same time getting someone over that's not relatively young but they can still go in the ring great on the microphone and the fans are behind them that's the real key once the fans are behind you the money prints itself so hey man uh, i'm some of these things have been happening and i'm looking forward to seeing where triple h takes wwe in the future so comment down below let me know so far it's been a small sample size but so far have you guys been liking what triple h has been doing the subtle little changes have you been enjoying it so far and are you looking forward to seeing what triple h has in store for us in the upcoming months weeks and however long he's uh at the top in the head of creative but i appreciate all love and support road to 90k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace